I mean, I'm sorry, what are we trying to teach the horse here again? Oh yeah, something that's just completely unnecessary. Hey bitch, and welcome back to another video of me talking about people I hate. Today we are actually starting a brand new video series on this channel, which is Let's Judge Horse Trainers. I figured this would be a really fun series to make because I get so many requests by you guys for me to react to other horse trainers and give my opinion on them, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Now, before anybody comes for me saying, oh my God, Raleigh, you're not a horse trainer. You're not out here training horses. Shut up. First of all, I did train horses, but second of all, that doesn't matter anyway. Authoritative arguments are stupid. You don't need to be a doctor to tell somebody when something is objectively right or wrong. So for for this new series, we're going to be reacting to y'all's most requested horse trainer of the month, and I'll probably film maybe one or two of these a month where I just react to new horse trainers. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be putting out community tabs where every time I do a video like this, we're going to do a poll, and the trainer that is most requested on the poll is the trainer that I will react to in my next Let's Judge Horse Trainers video. But you guys, before we get into today's video, today's Let's Judge Horse Trainers video, I have to say a massive thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa Jewelry. Make sure to check out my jewelry collection, you guys. Again, I worked so hard on this. All of my jewelry, all of my rings, even the necklace and ring that I'm wearing right now, all of my jewelry is from Ana Luisa Jewelry. I absolutely love them. I love that they take so much pride in their jewelry. It lasts forever. All of my jewelry has lasted me years. I'm not even kidding. And I've been working with Ana Luisa for years. So I'm so proud to have my own collection page on analuisajewelry.com. We worked really, really hard on it. And the jewelry really is just the highest quality jewelry that you're going to find that's going to last you forever. Not to mention that they are a carbon neutral company and they really take pride in being eco-friendly and having good business practices and ethics, which I just absolutely love. So definitely head on over to Ana Luisa Jewelry and check out my collection page, you guys, and you guys can click that link down below to do so. So Ryan Rose, I want to go into these Let's Judge Horse Trainers videos without knowing anything about the trainers. Now, the reason why I want to do this is because I feel like you develop biases towards certain people just off watching a couple videos. So I haven't seen anything of Ryan Rose, never seen his videos. This was the number one video requested of his for me to react to. And from what I've heard, this video has pretty mixed reviews. No matter what I say to this video, this is just my opinion. And also, this is just one video, okay? I've posted a lot of really stupid videos in my life. If my opinion happens to be negative, which I don't know because I haven't seen this video, that is not to say that all of his training practices are bad. Again, I'm going into this completely blind. Now, if I really feel like this guy's a whack job, I'll tell you that. However, this again is just one video for me to react to out of probably tons of videos that are on his channel. So who is Ryan Rose? I don't even know. Let's read his bio. So at Ryan Rose Horsemanship, Ryan Rose began his career as a professional horse trainer and clinician in 2005. Ryan soon realized that in order to have success as a horse trainer and clinician, he needed to become a horseman. Ryan has studied with many top world-class horsemen, spending four years with Pat Pirelli. Ryan now teaches workshops and clinics all over the world, as well as running a comprehensive training program at his home in Wisconsin. Ryan's passion is creating partnerships between horses and their owners. His skill in horse development and teaching set him apart. He also enjoys competing and training horses in ranch versatility. Okay. Okay, Ryan Rose. So this video is called Rescue Horse is Terrified of Its Shelter. Terrified. What the fuck is happening in the thumbnail? 
What is that? Is the lead rope like stuck on the roof? What is happening in that thumbnail? All right, you know what? Don't judge, Raleigh. You're going to prejudge and you're going to ruin everything and then people are going to come and send you death threats. Okay. Because if she can get her head under here, she could tear all this. Just tap her with the end of the lead rope. I feel like it's but hitting it, her it butt. Has, it is. So you are touching her. So we just got here and uh, Sarah called us and said, have some trouble with one of the horses staying in a stall. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about why you asked me to come on and give you a hand here today? Well, she is a rescue that I've had since about June. Okay. And um, we built the back side of the barn so we'd have enough room for all three of them. But I find the two geldings in this front barn and they come in and out of the paddock all night long, but they're blocked in there, work great. Mm -hmm. But she insists on being on the other side, but has to be able to come over. She can see them through the barn. But I swear, Great and, and she she can see them through the barn, through the hay. But okay. that doesn't matter. And, and she so looks. What, so what's the problem? You're trying to put her by herself. In I'm a, just trying to put her in there, just because the ceiling in this side is so short. Okay. The her, other two would be are fine in here. So this well, is like, and you're like locking them in. And I'm locking them in at like, night. For like nighttime. Or at something? nighttime, okay. I do. And this, but then when you lock her in, she doesn't want to stay in. No. Um, no, bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you locking your horses inside at night? Why? Like, what is the point of that? The horses would be perfectly happy out in this pasture. I don't understand why people lock their horses inside at night. I mean, do you guys realize horses are livestock? Like horses like being outside. Like I love it. I love it when people just baby the shit out of their horses and they're like, no, my horse, my horse loves being inside at night. He comes inside and he stays in his tiny little jail cell and walks around in circles. No, your horse does not like being inside. My horse doesn't even like going inside when there's a fucking blizzard. He'll stand outside playing in the snow. Horses don't like being in barns, in stalls. Stalls are also incredibly bad for horses. Even if you're doing it for nighttime, that's still like half the day. That's like 8 to 10 to 12 hours that a horse is staying in a stall. There are so many studies on why stalling a horse is absolutely terrible for them. If I was talking to this woman, I would have immediately caught that and I would have said something to her like, okay... So your overall goal is to put your horses in a stall at night. Why? Why are you just locking your horses up in this tiny little shed at night? That doesn't make any sense. I kind of think that they're going to force the horse to go in there and that's going to be what this entire video is about. You know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. When she's in the stall by herself, she looks like she's about to jump over the two by fours to get into the hay area and get to the boys. So she's worked up and she's yes. rolling around and thinking about and jumping out. And I give out. her a minute and then I quit going open the door because I don't. Because she has jumped over the stall. I mean, over the uh, trough. So we had to put that piece of wood there. Okay. She. Yep. And then she hurts herself. Yeah. She's telling you that she doesn't want to be locked up in a tiny little jail cell every night. There's no reason for them to be locked up at night. Just leave them out in the pasture. This is so stupid. So the main thing is we want her to get a little more self-confidence to be able to be in that pen by herself. Yeah. Let's but... just, we'll take her over there okay. um, and put her in there and let's see, see how we go. My plan is right now just to take her in there. Oh, back up, back up. Good boy, good girl. Just hope. Hey, 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 hey. Relax. So like she's already getting a little anxious Something different, about... yeah. Going in there. <clears throat> but, um, you know, and she likes, she goes in and eats. But I mean, normally when I bring her in, she wouldn't ever halt her on or anything. She'd just be coming in from her field, she'd start eating. And while she was eating, I would take her, I would just close up the door. So do you want me to try to do it? Um, but you'd want to be inside. And you're to saying, see what you're she's saying like. she tries to jump out. She tries to jump. I mean, and I don't know if she would jump. I didn't take the chance. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just worried because she was able to jump over the trough so easy. She's jumped over a side of the <laughs> fence there, which cut up her legs this last time. I'm just, I'm thinking that's nothing for her to jump over. My yeah. husband put that one up, but I want him to put another one up on the other side and even one in the middle, yeah. like above my head, so that I can still come in and out. I, I, would, I would add oh. Oh. another one here. As well? And maybe okay. even here. Because if she can get her head under here... I bet she could tear all this down. Ugh. So I'll hold her. I'm going to get rid of that nut. Too. I might work with her a little bit, and then I'll have you put the other two away. This is the most disaster of a shed design I've ever seen in my fucking life.
They have wire covering the windows. This is literally just a flimsy shed that they, like, picked up at Home Depot. And they're putting this horse in it every night. Ew. Why would you put your horse in this at night? I mean, honestly, I totally understand why the horse wouldn't want to be in there. And then they just threw up a couple of these, like, shitty boards What, you think this is going to hold in a horse that doesn't want to be in there? No, this is just a disaster waiting to happen. Like, this horse is going to get hurt because of this janky setup. This looks terrible. Yeah, I'll take that out. Actually, um, it wouldn't be bad to to, to have some hay in here, something that she could munch on. Okay, so Sarah is getting organized here. And in a perfect world, so the, the main outcome that we need is for the horse to find relief in the pen and be comfortable there so that if the storm comes or bad weather, we can tuck her away in her stall here. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, this guy seems like a nice guy. I haven't even gotten to judging him yet, but no, horses don't need to be locked away when there's storms or bad weather. None of that. Horses can be outside. They're animals. They don't need to be in a tiny little shed. And honestly, with serious windstorms, like a fucking tornado or something, the horse is better off outside than in a tiny little shed like that, where it's just going to get ripped to pieces. There's going to be flying wood debris going all over the place. No, the horse can stay outside. Horses don't mind the snow. They don't mind the cold. Horses can regulate their body temperature in extremely cold weather. What seems cold to you is not cold to a horse. There's a a couple of situations here. Um, The horse is going to think that direction towards the other two. Now, because of the setup over there, I can't bring her that way and make it uncomfortable and then release her back here. I have to come out this direction. That's not ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Sarah stand um, on that side outside the fence with the flag. And if the horse thinks over, Sarah, I'm gonna have you work the flag kind of in her face, not touch, you don't even, probably don't even need to touch her, but just noisy enough that she yields away, like ideally looks away, okay? okay. And then I'll come back in, um, grab her again, put, put her to work a little bit, and then release her in here. So the premise is hot lava out here, relief in here, okay? okay. So we're gonna start that process. Okay, cool. I mean, there's nothing unique about this training. I mean, everybody does this. There's nothing wrong with this training. Like I'm not hating on him or anything. I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, pressure and release, right? That's literally what he's doing. He's adding pressure outside to release pressure inside. So the horse thinks, oh, it's just better if I stay inside. This is not a new training method. There's nothing unique about this. I mean, this has been done for (laughs) hundreds of years with horses. So if that's all that this video is going to be, I mean, fine, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that training method. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with probably what he's going to do. And doing this at feeding time when you can release her in there with feed, it would be just fine. So all I'm going to do... You know, when we talk about making it uncomfortable or hot lava somewhere else, it's not a, a, as much about the work. It's about me being noisy and putting pressure on her over here. That's that's what it's about. Okay, I'm not freaking out about the training. I'm freaking out about what the hell is this? What is this shed? Dude, the horse could literally just jump up a tiny bit and smack her head on the beams. That's how short the ceiling is in this barn. And you know what? She said that the other barn was shorter than this one. What are you keeping your horses in? Put your horses out in pasture full time. These little sheds are not cutting it, girl. Okay? No. You know, she also has the windows shut, which is not good for air circulation. It's not good for a horse's respiratory tract. But, you know, firstly, we just shouldn't be putting horses in crap like this anyway. And look at the floor. Like... The floorboards look like they're just these thin pieces of wood that the horse could easily fall through. And now we're gonna run into a little pressure here. So it doesn't have to take very long, it doesn't have to be a lot, and then we're gonna come right back in. But you can already see by her response, she doesn't, she doesn't think a lot, very highly of coming in here yet. So mm-hmm. we're not gonna take her offline until she gets a little bit more willing. But again, if she wants, Ooh, she made a good choice there. Yeah. But if she wants to head out, she can head out. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say this right out of the gate. I don't think this is a matter of if the horse will go in there because the horse only freaks out when the door is closed. 
if the horse is only freaking out and panicking when the door is closed, that's a pretty good indication that the horse just is claustrophobic, like most horses are, and doesn't want to be locked in a tiny jail cell, which is completely normal. Like, that's completely normal horse behavior. And I don't like it when people pretend like normal horse behavior is not normal. It is. Horses don't like being locked in small, tight spaces. That's a normal thing for horses to not like. Because this horse is standing here perfectly fine right at the doorway, I'm sure that if this lady just opened this and allowed the horse to use it as shelter when it pleased throughout the night, if the horse wanted to go in there, the horse would probably go in and out of the shed regularly if the horse had the option to go in and out and she never locked her in, which is normal, okay? Link doesn't like being locked inside stalls. And it's not that he goes crazy, but he definitely paces and it makes him uncomfortable as it would if somebody took you and put you in a bathroom for 12 hours and said, hey, you can't leave. By the way, there's nothing else for you to do too, so you just have to sit here in a tiny bathroom. Now, those of you watching this video, don't get too excited about the hay part. Because it's more about, you know, you can, you can make something positive, but at the end of the day, if you want to build depth of understanding, you have to have a horse um, that sees both sides of the equation. There's pressure out here, which makes it sweeter in here. Mm -hmm. If all we relied on was feeding her in here and making it sweet, that may not be enough. Ah, she didn't go as far to the door that time. Can you see how there's a little bit of yeah. progress already? And um, I think what I'll start to do now is uh, play with closing this. Oh. I literally knew that was going to happen because the dude's literally letting his lead rope like drag on the ground and the horse just stepped on the lead rope and smacked her head on the shed. Why? Because the shed ceiling is way too small. The horse should not be put in a tiny shed like that. I mean, seriously, a horse should not be able to reach the ceiling of your barn if it freaks out by stepping on a lead rope and lifts its head slightly. That's not safe. That's not a safe environment. You are just asking for vet bills, seriously. And also, I mean, whatever, this guy made a mistake. He fucked up. He let his lead rope drag on the ground. This could have been a catastrophe right there. That horse could have smacked its head and cut its forehead open, and it could have been a lot worse than what you just saw right there. So that guy's honestly pretty lucky. But there's really nothing that he's doing that's unique. I mean, I use this training method. This is one of the first training methods that I learned. And I think I learned this when I was like eight Tons of trainers do this. Actually, I think the majority of trainers that I've seen use training methods that are identical to this, like not even different in any way. I don't know. The issue that I have with this guy just right out of the gate, it's not his training. I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the training method, but it's just not unique. Everybody does this. The problem I have with this guy is his lack of communication to the owner about why you shouldn't even be doing this with your horse. He should have communicated to her that the shed is a terrible place for that horse to live and it's incredibly dangerous. And maybe he did off camera, I don't know. And also he should have communicated to her that it's completely normal for a horse to not want to stay in a tiny enclosed space. He also should have communicated to her that horses don't need to be locked away when bad weather happens because horses are animals that can live outside. The lack of communication is really my biggest problem with this video. I don't really care that much about the training. Good job. Okay, and she got more nervous with me leaving. So you see how the horse immediately starts defecating, meaning that the horse is nervous. The horse starts pacing, gets these huge giant eyes, breathing heavily. The horse doesn't want to be locked in a tiny space, which again is completely normal horse behavior. I would not even want to be locked in this at night. 
In my opinion, I don't think the horse has a problem going into the shed at all. I think that the horse just doesn't like being in there when the door is locked, which is normal. I mean, I'm sorry, what are we trying to teach the horse here again? Oh yeah, something that's just completely unnecessary. Yep, touch her with it. Good. I no, never no, like that. Now her back into the stall. <laughs> I've never like hit her. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's but hitting it, her it butt. Has, it is, so you are touching her. <laughs> But it, it's it's to put enough pressure on again to make it relief in here. I'm gonna come in here with you. I'm gonna kind of explain. Try not to hold her too much. Try to just let her settle. Because again, she was so worried about being in here and trying to blow out of here so much when this door started closing that you have to put enough pressure out there to create the effect of relief in here. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's say let's give it a number, and th this is really important for you to understand this this concept that I'm about to share. So most people don't want to be firm with the horses, right? No, I'm sorry, no. I will disagree with him on this. Again, I don't think there's a problem with his training method. I don't think there's a problem with it at all. And I also agree that a lot of people are way too soft with horses when they train them. You shouldn't be aggressive and you shouldn't be just flat out mean, but you also can't be a pushover when you're training horses. So I get what he's saying. I do disagree though with how he thinks this is going to turn out because there is no amount of training that can get rid of a horse's natural instincts. You might be able to mask that for a certain period of time, but eventually it's going to come out, especially with a horse that's already showing it. So you have a horse that just is naturally fearful of small, tiny, enclosed spaces and doesn't want to be in there and has already figured out that if she tries hard enough, she can break her way out. That horse is probably never going to want to be locked in that shed and is always going to try to get out of it, no matter how much training she does, because the horse doesn't panic when people are there. She panics when everybody leaves. But if you, if you haven't already, go back and watch the video of how much pressure is too much pressure. We have that video. It's, a, it's an audio talk that we did explaining the more depth of what I'm about to share with you. Let's say... A scale of pressure, zero is no pressure, 10 is like, oh my gosh, you just like did as, there's no more pressure that you could possibly put on a horse, okay? Um, and you were pressuring her at like a nine though out there at first because you were realizing how upset she was getting. The amount here. of pressure I was putting on there, I would probably give it a six and a half, seven. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There could be okay. more. It could be more. Okay. Um, and I'm just being honest. And, and a lot of one of the, th the things that I make, imagine if every horse could get trained with patience, time, and cookies. <laughs> right. Like there would be no need. There would be, you know, I'd be out of work. Job, right? I would have a job. Because <laughs> I'm, there's plenty of people that could have time, patience, cookies, and you could get a horse settled. But the psychology of the way horses work, and if you just watch how they interact with each other and how much pressure they put on each other, I have never put as much pressure on a horse as what another horse would do. Okay. Never gone there. Have you seen horses bite? Well, I've and been kick? watching as I've had all three yeah. of them here now. Yeah. I mean, they can. I mean, they can be really vicious with mm -hmm. each other. To me, I always kind of get a little bit of a red flag pop up when trainers talk about how, oh, I'm not actually putting pressure on a horse, nowhere near compared to what other horses do. Have you seen how violent other horses are to each other? Yeah. Well, guess what? You're not a horse, so. This analogy is not really working for you, bro, okay? Humans are not horses, and horses don't see humans as horses because guess what? We're not horses, and we need to learn how to communicate properly with horses. Now, what he's talking about is a red flag because a lot of times trainers that are overly aggressive, not as aggressive as horses on horses, but trainers that are overly aggressive to horses often justify that aggression by saying, oh, well, it's okay because I'm not as aggressive as how other horses are to each other. Again, you're not a horse, and horses can't communicate with you like they can with other horses. I'm not saying that this guy was being aggressive. I don't think he was being overly aggressive, but I just think that his analogy is flawed and kind of the way that he's viewing this situation, I have issues with. 
because I wouldn't even be teaching the horse to do this in the first place. I think it's wrong. And I feel like a lot of trainers lack ethics. And I'm not saying that he does or doesn't, but this is where I would draw the line. I would never train a horse to do something that I think is bad for them. And I think that training a horse to go into a tiny box like this and live half their life in it every single night, I think that's wrong. Your horses can learn through repetition, but they also need, in order to be effective with a horse, you have to be effective. In order to be effective with a horse, you have to be effective. <laughs> Pressure causes the relief to be effective. Yeah, that makes sense. That okay. makes sense. And again, I wish, in some ways, I wish this wasn't true because I don't, I don't want to put pressure on them either. I'd rather just come and pet them. But it, the truth is, the horses would be so trainable if that's all it took, and it takes a little bit more than that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where you know, you know, there's times where I see how troubled a horse is about something, and I might go, Good "This God. isn't worth it to do to to try to work through that." Like we we have to find a workaround. We we can't we can't fix this, you know. And, and so I use my experience of training thousands of horses to determine what level is fair to that horse and, and you know, given the horse's age and given how important it is to do what whatever we're doing and that sort of thing. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of thought and method that goes into understanding when is it okay to put, a, put pressure on a horse and being fair about that. But I am very convinced she is more settled and more comfortable right now than at any point yes. when I've been here. And, and even so when I unhooked her, the and number started one gift her. we yeah. can give horses is helping them feel comfortable. Yeah. And so by putting pressure on her out there, we've allowed this horse to feel more comfortable in here. And that's at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do is help her get comfortable in here. The the lesson has been learned. Yep. Now you need to do a few more repetitions of it. Yep. So that if a week or two goes by that she's not really in here, it's good weather, and then one day you're like, Oh, it's storms coming, we gotta put you in here and she doesn't understand that, mm -hmm. she'll she'll be okay with it because of the prep work that we did. And that's the other one of my big things is trying to do this when things are going well. So the best time to practice this is when you don't have to lock her in right, right now. Right. You know? um, and tonight, though, because it's going to be, I think it's supposed to be like 29 or something tonight. Maybe it's not supposed to be that cold. But in the next few days, it's supposed to be that cold. Yeah. I'll just keep practicing it. No, people. No. No, 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 no. Don't put your horses inside just because of a storm. Horses can withstand comfortably without a blanket up to negative five degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that is Celsius, but I'll put it up there. That's without a blanket. Horses can tolerate up to negative five degrees Fahrenheit without a blanket. Obviously, I'm not talking about babies or like old sick horses. Regular horses can tolerate negative five degrees Fahrenheit comfortably. Only after that should you ever need to put like a blanket on them or maybe bring them inside somewhere. How often does it get to negative five? Um, almost never. It snowed here just the other day and it was 20 degrees. Guess what? Link was outside running around with no blanket and was perfectly fine. Oh my God, but my horse gets icicles. No, icicles are a sign. They're a sign that your horse is regulating their internal body temperature, which is why the icicles on your horse are not melting. Horses that have icicles in cold weather actually are doing a phenomenal job of staying warm and regulating their body temperature. So again, just because it's cold for you doesn't mean it's cold for the horse. Most horses are actually comfortable, like their ideal temperature is like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's my final take. If I were to grade this guy C+, plus, maybe B-, minus. here's why I'm rating him a C+. Plus. It has nothing to do with his training, and I don't think he's abusive in any way, so don't get that wrong. It has more to do with the communication to the owner. Clearly this woman has no idea what she's doing. She doesn't even know what horses can tolerate temperature wise comfortably. And she also doesn't know how to build proper structures to keep her horse inside. My biggest issue with Ryan is I wish that he would have communicated with her about why you shouldn't even be putting your horse in a stall because stalling is bad and we have tons of vet studies on why stalling is bad. But also 
why the horse doesn't like being in there because that's a very natural thing for a horse to not want to be locked in a tiny little kill box like that. Also, why horses can be outside in cold temperatures and they don't need to be stalled. And it's actually better for a horse to be outside all the time, full time, as much as possible, so they can get as much exercise as possible. And he should have communicated to her about why that shed is dangerous and she should not be putting her horse in there at all. He might have just been like, whatever, let me just try to help this woman and I'm just not even gonna get into it. But I would have said, here's your problem solved in one second. Don't put your horse in there. Let your horse be in pasture full time. Problem solved. Everyone's happy. You're happy, you have less work, the horse is happy, and the horse doesn't have to go into a little jail cell at night, okay? Everyone's happy, boom, boom, done, thank you for your time. That literally would have been the extent of my interaction with a person like that. C+, plus, maybe if I watched a couple of his other videos, I might feel differently, like he might be better in some of his other videos, so I might potentially change my mind, I don't know, but for now, C+. Plus. And I feel like that's like being generous, but you know. Here I am, generous. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. But before I let you go, don't forget to check out Ana Luisa Jewelry. Okay, I love you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.